time we spent together, making sure we stayed together as a group. Like, we've got a bunch of lives today, so I'm sure we're all going to stay there and watch the lives, watch Walker throw and stuff like that. So just uh, keep being a cohesive group and stay together. And, uh, you know, it worked for us going into the DS, so um, we're going to try to try that again this time around. And then for you and just your ankle, how are you feeling and how valuable is this week for you just preparing for the World Series? Yeah, I mean, I think the word is valuable. Uh, it's very valuable. Every day um, that I can get off my feet and not running and just treating this is, is huge. I mean, obviously, I didn't play in game six, so that was a day I didn't have to run. I can still hit. I can do all that kind of stuff. It's more of once I take that first run step a few days ago, that's when everything kind of just flares up in my ankle. So... I'm now at three straight days of not running and just only treating it. So every day is going to be better. I mean, it's with all injuries, treatment and rest and time away from the initial injury is only going to be better. So uh, we're just trying to do the best we can to get it into a spot that'll be ready to go on Friday. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next question is from Dave Vasse. Go ahead, David. Hey, Freddie. Um, everybody's wondering what the biggest difference is this season than the past two seasons. I know every year is unique. And another part to that question is uh, you've talked about just whoever gets hot makes a deep run like this. Does it feel like 21 with the Braves? Um, What's different? Um, I mean, we did everything different going into the DS as a group of players. Um, I think that's what's different from the last two years, obviously with the watch parties and just hanging out and making sure we're together. Um, I don't know if you can really control baseball in the sense of doing anything different. I mean, we got hits with runners in scoring position. We pitched and we did all that. That's what happened. Um, but I would say when I look at the 21 Braves, we had Eddie Rosario. Rosario hit 580 against the Dodgers, I think, that year. And this in the NLCS, it was, I mean, obviously Tommy won the MVP, which was incredible. But you had Shohei, Mookie, you know, everyone was kind of months and everyone was just hitting. So, um, I think we've just been playing really good baseball throughout the course. I mean, I think it was huge, like in Colorado, and we played the Padres before Colorado. It's just we had a lot of good things and good momentum leading into the playoffs. Um, and I think we just kind of carried it over, and a lot of guys are swinging that well. Obviously, our bullpen's been amazing. Jack's thrown a couple great games. Yamamoto's been looking good. Walk looked great in New York. So a lot of things have just kind of come together for us to, to get to this point and be able to have these sweatshirts on. Thank you. Great sweatshirt. Yep. <laughs> Next question is from Jack Harris. Go ahead, Jack. Hey, Freddie, do you, um, just with the week off and the rest on the ankle, like, do you have a sense of, like, how much it can progress by Friday, or is that something that once you get there, kind of just, you, once you start running on it again, see how yeah, it feels? I think it's more of, I mean, I feel pretty good walking, you know, and I feel okay hitting, you know. Um, it's all the more movement stuff of running and stuff like that but I'm the, i wish i could give more definitive answers of what i will feel like on friday um but i just don't have that because i've never sprained an ankle before if i if i had broken a wrist and it was coming back from that, I, could help, I could at least give you guys exactly how i feel and what i could look forward to but right now i'm on my third day of not running so i think every day like today i'll i'll go through i'll do dino drills I'll hit, I'll obviously have a full day of treatment. So, but I, I'm not going to run because I want to get this thing as calm down as I possibly can to have the best, get my best self and be ready to go by game one. So um, just trying to do the best I can. I wish I could give more definitive answers of what I would feel like in three days. But again, when you get hurt, I think every day away from that injury and every day you treat it and it's only going to be better. So I'm hoping that these, pretty much six, seven days that I will have off since I didn't play in the last one will be what I need to be able to go. Yeah. And then when you talk about, you know, you guys having as many guys swinging the bat well right now as you do, is that something that's just like the randomness of baseball? Is there something that you're seeing team-wide, whether it's approach or work that kind of leads to that? Or, or how do you explain well, our, it? Our biggest thing that we harped on that uh, week be before, between the end of the season and the DS was hit the fastball. And we worked on hitting fastball, hitting below, facing trajects, facing below and the trajects in the cage. And I think that's kind of helped us because I think if you looked at the numbers of the last couple of post seasons, we didn't hit the fastball like we did during the course of the regular season. So I think that was a big 
big thing. And, you know, obviously, Manaya in game six, we, that was our, in our hitters meeting, was take the fastball away from him. He loves the fastball. If you can get him down off the top um, and try to take that fastball away from him, you, well, we, we would be in a good spot. And we were able to knock him out in the first couple innings. So I think it's just more of, I think, approach and sticking to the plan. We've been sticking to the plan of what we've been talking about in the hitters meeting, and that's being on the fastball. Because if you're on the fastball, then you can be able to adjust off that. Uh, I think we've just done a really good about doing that and sticking to our approach and our plan. Yeah. Thanks, Freddie. Yep. Next question is from Bill Plunkett. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, Freddie, I'm on my 300th day of not running. It really does help the ankles. <laughs> How difficult was it to sit and watch when, when you weren't in the lineup the other day? Um, what have those conversations with Dave been like? Yeah, so um, – I, I kind of knew uh, on the off day going into game six that I wasn't going to be playing. Um, it's just kind of how I was feeling in game five. Um, usually I can get back then, like a week or so ago, I could get through four or five innings before I was having trouble walking. And obviously in game game five, it started happening pretty much right after my first at bat. So it, just, uh, it was just kind of progressing to making it really hard for me to get through a game. So uh, with the position we were in um, and hopefully being able to win on game six, that's what we were obviously hoping for, that it would give me the best opportunity with that rest to be ready for game one. Um, obviously, as a competitor and, you know, being with the guys all regular season, you want to be on the field with them. But you also have to understand, and believe me, when I walk through those front doors of our clubhouse, everything gets checked up the fr at the door and all I want to do is win and I'm obviously compromised with my ankle. So um, if I'm not in the lineup on that day, that means the best option is with our guys. And I have the most confidence. I mean, you've seen, I haven't played three games. I think they're averaging about nine runs a game without me in there. So um, I have great confidence in everybody, but um, they just wanted me to rest up and get ready for game one. And um, luckily the group of guys that we have, the depth, months being able to play multiple positions. We have so many guys that can bounce around um, and obviously guys are swinging the back great. So yeah, it was tough, but I think it was just better off for the situation with my ankle was to hopefully win that game, give me more time off than trying to gut through a, another game. You mentioned the, the preparing for the fastball. How much of the game planning, uh, has been about not chasing and plate discipline? Cause you guys walked 46 times in that NLC. And I think that's being on the fastball. If you're on the fastball in the top of the zone or in your lane that you're looking, then you'll be able to check off other pitches. Um, you know, I think with Manire, we were look, like the righties were looking up and closer to be able to lay off the change up down and away, you know? So it's more about like, you can talk about approaches and hitters meetings like we do all the time, but I think the key is applying that in the game. And I think that's what we've been doing so good. We've been just been on the fastball, but in a certain lane, either it be hunt it closer, hunt it up, hunt it middle, hunt it up in a way to make you not swing at cutters and sliders in, go up against certain players so you don't have to swing at the changeups below the zone. That's just what we talk about daily on in the hitters meetings. And I we've just been applying it really, really well in games and sticking to our plans and you know, baseball, I mean, you can really break it down. It's just hitting it and catching it and throwing it. You, you, you can make it harder than it is. But when you can try and simplify little things in, in the course of an approach or a plan, it can make things just a tad bit easier. And I think that's when you have certain guys that are so good at controlling strike zones, it just puts so much pressure. And especially over a course of a seven-game series, if you can get into bullpens quicker, it just makes it harder throughout the course of those seven games. Uh, and we just, that's what I thought we did a heck of a job in against the Mets is controlling the strike zone, getting into bullpens early in the series to really um, set up, you know, different, different matchups. And it's just when you can get a guy on base every single inning, it felt like that's what we were doing. It's just harder. It's more stressful pitches, more stressful innings. Um, guys get tired quicker. Uh, I thought that was just a heck of a job by our guys in, in the NLCS. Thank you. Next question is from Fabian Ardaya. Go ahead, Fabian. Oh, you said that nicely. Yeah, you said it properly. Um, um, with your ankle, is it in a place right now where like you're able to get through sort of the work that you want to with your swing to get it right? Um, I was, yeah, I didn't hit yesterday. I just came to the field yesterday and just did, you know, the three, four hours of treatment. 
Um, you know, I, I, I was in a good place on game six. Um, I hit for about a couple hours uh, during the course of that day, trying to work on my swing. Um, it, it's just tough. You know, my, my, I kind of roll on my front foot when I hit and it's not able to roll right now. So it's more of just, you know, just trying to work through that and trying to find a spot where I can. And, um, you know, walking into the field today, obviously feel uh, better than I did a couple of days ago. So uh, I feel like I'm in a good spot to be able to do to work on my swing today and work hard uh, and hopefully be able to do that the next couple of days to give myself uh, a great chance on game one. And rolling on that front foot, is that maybe something that's maybe tied to the power for you when it comes to your swing? Uh, it's, I don't really look at power. I look at my swings cutting through the zone. You'll never have power if your swing's cutting through the zone. And my swing on game five, when I hit the ground, if you, like I hit the ground and I, I usually go into my front foot and then turn. In game five, I was hitting and then spinning because my foot, when my ankle was not allowing me to do what I wanted it to do. So that was why it kind of led into game six that I wasn't going to play because it was like one of the first times where I felt like my ankle, ankle had compromised my swing. Um, so I think that's why we kind of, that was one of the big reasons. But, um, you know, right now, and I feel pretty good that I can get into my front foot and hopefully I can do that and fit, be the swing. And then, you know, I'm just trying to hit singles. If power comes, it comes. Um, but with a good swing, that's where power comes. I just don't have any power right now because my swing is cutting through the zone. Like, I mean, we've, you, you and I and Bill and Jack and Juan and Dave, we've all talked about through the course of the year, my swing has been cutting a little bit. So just get the ball, swing back up through the middle and then the power will come. Got time for a couple more. Go ahead, Dylan. Hey, Freddie. Hey. Um, just had a question about uh, uh, Mookie. You know, uh, obviously when he came back, uh, there were some changes, you know, in terms of, right, his place in the batting order, got moved out of his customary leadoff spot. Uh, you know, he went back right from shortstop back to right field. Um, you know, the fact that he kind of did this so, like, graciously and kind of not made it an issue – I guess, A, what did that tell you about him? And B, what kind of impact do you think that's had in kind of the clubhouse culture that you guys have now? Yeah, I mean, I think you saw a little bit last year, him going through, going to second base and going back and forth in right field. Um, it's just a player and a person who will do anything to win. And um, I think you've seen that over the course of his five years here. He'll do anything to win, to win. And when that kind of thing that happened in spring training, moving Gavin back to second and him moving to short and him, like, that's just who he is. It's just, it makes us, I mean, every time I say it, it's just Mookie Betts, the man can do anything he wants. He's one of the, I think one of the best athletes I've ever seen on a field. Um, he's one of the only people that could probably do this, what he has done throughout the course of the year. Um, and when you have a bunch of people who don't worry about the name on their back and all they care about is the name on the front. And that's kind of what we have in this clubhouse. A lot of guys that are like that, it brings everybody together because it shows that everyone's just trying to do everything they can possibly to win a ball game. And we saw it early on in spring training with Mookie and throughout the course of the year, you just see arguably top three, maybe, I mean, you got Shohei Aaron and Juan and Mookie just doing everything he possibly can to be the best version of himself at shortstop. Um, it just, that just shows the character of that, of that player. And it just carries over to the rest of the team. And um, when you have someone who's so unselfish, like he is, it makes everybody around you that much better. Last one's from Beth Harris. Go ahead, Beth. Hey, Freddie, even with the uh, days off here for you, do you anticipate that it could come down to just literally a game time decision for Friday, whether you could start or not? Um, I, right now, I don't even, I'm not really thinking about game time decisions. I, I don't think it's, I think with this time off, it's going to be a 100% go for me on uh, game one. And we'll adjust off of that after game one. But I don't think there's any question in anybody's mind um, that I will be in the lineup for game one. Thanks, Freddie.